My name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn algebra. Today is our day number 20. The problem is already on the blackboard. It says show that the expression 3x squared plus 2xy minus y squared equals the expression 11x squared minus 10xy minus y squared when x equals 3 and y equals 2. Alright, so let's get going. The very first thing we need to do is to give these two expressions names. That's how it's done in algebra. Although we could just put in the value of x of 3 and y of 2 and just show them that they are equal and be done with it, but we're going to do it in the proper way. Do you understand? The way it should be done. We're not going to cut corners. So, let's, let's, let's christen these expressions. What does it mean to christen? It means to give something or somebody a name. If you just type in Kashwani Kashwani prep dash vocab dash day 63 if you just type in this tag Kashwani prep dash vocab dash day 63 you will learn this word christen that's what 63 is for that 63 is the day number so if you want to watch the vocabulary videos and expand your vocabulary at the same time while you're learning algebra, that's the way to do it. Just go to the video and learn it. Let's question this expression. I'm going to call, um, let's call them, what do you want to call them? Where did I call them in my notes? Let's call them uh, A, B, B, Q, I don't know. Let's call them M and N. M. M and N sound very similar to each other. Let's call them A and B. You see, that's what you get. That's why it's important that you take time, like I just take my time, because when you take time, that's when you become creative. A and B. That's where the creativity shows through. Being silly. All right. Let's Chris. So we have expression A and we have expression B, and our job is to show that these two expression, expression A and B, are equal to each other when x equals three and y equals two. How do we write it in mathematical language? This is how we write it. We have to show that A of three two equals B of three two. Now I'm going to read this thing. This part here, this part here is read as A of 3, 2, which means value of the expression A when x equals 3 and y equals 2. Value of the expression A when x equals 3 and y equals 2. And our job is to show that that value is the same as the value of the expression B when x equals 3 and y equals 2. Although they do not need to be the same. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to show you a different scenario. Here I have an expression P. I'm not telling you what that expression is. But I'm telling you the value of that expression at 3, 4 is same as the value of the expression Q at 7, 11. Now what this says is that I have an expression which I'm calling P in which I have two variables. And of course since I'm not showing you the expressions, you do not know what those two variables are. But it, is, it depends on two variables. It could be x and y, it could be a and b, it could be any two variables. The value of the expression p, when the first variable takes the value of 3 and the second variable takes the value of 4, is the same as the value of the expression q, when the first variable in that expression, and again, variables do not have to be the same either. This might be made up of, for example, I'm going to give you an example. Say, for example, expression p is, uh, expression p is uh, 2p plus q, or rather, expression p is, 2a plus b. That's my expression p. And expression q is x 
expression Q is uh, 3F minus G. As you can see, well actually since, since I have it down, let's, let's figure it out properly. I'm, I know I'm digressing it, we'll finish this in a second. I'm trying to make you understand, I'm trying to make you understand that these, this, this is 3 and this is 3, but they do not need to be the same. This is 2 and this is 2, they do not need to be the same, as you can see clearly, they're different. And these variables do not need to be same. So let's find out. We're gonna, once you find out what, what actually works, I'm going to change this number so you can see it. Okay? Let's put in, let's put in 3 for A and 4 for B. So 2 times 3 is 6 plus 4 is 10. So this is 10. Here we need 10 also. Okay? Since we need the 10, I'm going to make it into 10. Watch what happens. I'm going to first of all change this minus D to plus G. And we know that 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10. So it's sort of 7 and 11 we have x equals, uh, rather f equals 3 and g equals 1. Voila! You see? Well, actually the first one happened to be the same again, but that's just a fluke. We need a 10 here. How could we make 10? We could do, we could do 4 f's, which would be 4 f's. Let's give a value, let's give a first variable the value of, I don't want to be the 3 and 3. I want to make that a 5. So that's 20 and 20 minus g. There you go. Voila. So now we have 2 times 5 which is 20 minus g which is 10. Well, there you go. 2 times 4 times 5 which is 20 minus 10 is 10. And they are equal because this is also 10. So as you can see here, here p this is how it's read. One more time. This part is going to be read as P of 2, 3 equals Q of Q of 5, 10. That's how you read it. Now what that says is that the value of the expression P, value of the expression P, whatever that expression happens to be, we, we, in the beginning we did not know this expression, I just made it up. Whatever that expression happens to be, the value of the expression P, when the first variable takes the value of 3 and the second variable takes the value of 4, the value of that expression P at that time is the same as the value of the expression Q, when the first variable in the expression Q takes the value of 5 and the second variable in the expression Q takes the value of 10, whatever the expression happened to be. You understand? The expression Q is made up of two variables, F and G. Expression P is, P is made up of two variables, A and B. As you can see, they are not the same variable, they are not the same thing. But anyway, let's keep it separate here. Let's put a demarcation so we can keep it separate. So here our job is to show that the expression A, the value of the expression A, when x is 3 and y is 2, is same as the value of the expression B, when x is 3 and y is 2 also. But this is just a fluke that they are the same. Because that's what the question is asking. Let's do it here. I need the room, so I'm going to erase all of this thing. So expression A, this is your expression A right here, equals 3x squared plus 2xy minus y squared. And A of 3 and 2 would be, replace x by 3, so 3 squared plus 2 times 3, replace y by 2 minus 2 squared. That 2 is too sloppy. 3 squared is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, plus 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, minus 4. 12 minus 4 is 8, so it's 27 plus 8, but well, we know that 27 plus 10 is 37, so 27 plus 8 must be 35. So this is what we get here, which means we better get, we better get 35 here also when we do B equals eleven x squared minus ten x y minus y squared. This is getting too crowded. So here now we have to find B of three two also. 
3 to also, as I already explained, it didn't have to be, but it, it, that's how the question was. So we replace x by 3, 11 times 3 squared minus 10 times 3 times 2 minus 2 squared. Let's find out. 11 times 3 squared, 3 squared is 9, 9 times 11 is 99 minus, minus 10 times 3 times 2, 10 times 3 times 2. And then finally y squared, which was minus 2 squared. 10 times 3 times 2, well, 10, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 times 10 is 60. And minus 4. Let's see what that boils down to. 99 minus 60 minus 4. 99 minus 60 would be 39. 39 minus 4 would be 35. What do you know? They're the same. They are the same. Which is what our job was. Our job was to show that these two expressions are equal when x equals 3 and y equals 2. But as I showed you in this example, which I made up impromptu, I don't know if we ever covered that word. I'm, I'm looking at my list here. I have a whole bunch of uh, big index card where I put these words alphabetically and I'm trying to see if we did, ever did impromptu. Oh, we did cover it. What do you know? Sometimes I surprise myself. You might know the word and you might not. So I'm going to put the word impromptu here. I'm going to insert it someplace here so you can see it. Now you need to know how to spell it. There you go. I M P R O M P T U impromptu, which means to do something on the spur of the moment, to do something without having thought about it ahead of time, to do something uh, in an unpremeditated manner. If, if that makes you happy, premeditated means to think ahead of time, and unpremeditated unpremeditated manner would be to think something, do to do something uh, on the spur of the moment. This problem that you see there was out of my notes here, which I had made ahead of time. But this is just impromptu. I just made it up here because I was trying to make you understand. All of a sudden I had this urge to make you understand two things. First was that the, this value of the variable 3 and 2 and 3 and 2 did, did not need to be the same, as you can see clearly here. The second thing I was trying to make you understand is that the, these variables did not need to be. This, is, this expression is made up of x and y. And this, variable, this expression is made up of x and y as well. But the variables, even the variables do not need to be the same. You see this expression P is made up of A and B. P, expression P here equals 2A plus B. And expression Q here equals 4F minus G. You see it's made up of two variables, F and G. And the question, and what we found is that the value of the expression Q, when F equals 5, and the value of the first variable is 5, and the variable, value of the second variable is 10, is same as the value of the expression p when a equals 3 and b equals 4. We just showed it here. I will see you tomorrow on day number 21 when we will start a new topic where we will learn how to add and subtract algebraic expressions, which is what we're going to do over the next 10 days from day number 21 through day number 30. And after that, we'll spend another 10 days learning how to multiply and, and divide algebraic expressions. And then we'll, I'll take you on a journey where we'll start we will learn how to solve simple linear equations and after that starting from day number 51 is where the fun is going to begin when we'll start the word problems but we cannot go to we cannot jump in the deep end of the swimming pool without having learned few things about how to swim otherwise we'll drown you will get discouraged you will, it will be a foreign language we have to learn some basics of the algebra before we can you before we can uh, do the word problems properly that is okay i will see you tomorrow on day number 21 in the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, you can send me an email from any of these website addresses that you see, or you can go to kishwaniprep.com and send me an email from there. All right.